Welcome to another interview presented by Wrestling Forums. I'm Jackson Bast here with a man who really needs no introduction, the five-time state champ, Fargo All-American, on top of so many more, Jaden New. Jaden, how are you doing today? Been a great day. Glad we get to do this, finally. <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, I have to start off by asking you, what got you into wrestling? Uh, I, also, I think it started when Alexander first sent out a um, – a program that was Coach Tarzog, and he it said like Taekwondo or or wrestling. Uh, I took it home to my mom. I don't think she was the biggest fan of it, uh, but I'm glad I did it. And my dad, I think, talked her into it and thought it would be a great idea. Uh, wrestling's never been at Alexandria. It was the first time it's ever ha it's ever came to Alexandria, so it's super new to everybody. Uh, but I think it was a great decision. So, uh, of course, you know, you started at Alexandria Wrestling. This is a, a brand new program. What was kind of that experience like being to be a part of a first time youth program? Uh, it also, I, I can't really remember that far back, but I do remember uh, looking back at pictures. Uh, the group of kids that are that were that became state champs were all in that group. Uh, you got Christian, Fletcher, Aaron, Hope, and Preston Jones to come. Uh, and they all were just part of that program. And Coach Charzog did a really good job of thinking that through. Uh, he took a couple guys that were super invested in it, and he brought them to grow a love for wrestling. And then, of course, clubs and all that have a uh, big deal in it, but he gave us the love of wrestling to go do that because no one's going to go do club if they don't actually want to wrestle. And no one takes that, that next step unless they want to get better. And what do you mean by he was able to – how was he able to give you a good passion for the sport? Uh, he made it fun. Like, you know, when you're in youth, you're just – I mean, you're a kid. You just want to go do other things. You don't, like – no one wants to sit down for two hours or an hour and a half or an hour, but however long you practice is and just sit there and watch, like, and be taught something. So uh, I feel like he made it super fun and – uh, whether that be going to tournaments and giving us time to compete against other, other people. Um, it just – he was very good at persuading. He's a very good persuasive guy, and I feel like that did a big toll on everybody who who stayed with it the whole time. And, of course, I don't, I don't know how many people know, but you, you've kind of uh, – you've kind of been everywhere in the state when it comes to being able to wrestle. Of course, you started up. Alexandria, uh, and then before the interview, we talked about it. You were at uh, NAWA, EAWC, AWC, Ironclad. You, you, you've been a part of a lot of different programs, and you know it, it takes a real sponge to try to soak up all that kind of information. Yeah, it um, it's a lot. It's, I mean, you, as I said, I started in first grade. I can't remember when I actually started club wrestling, but it's been a while long enough for me not to remember but um i mean yeah you can't give one coach more credit than the other because without that one you wouldn't have the next one and it just it means a lot because i mean my first coach i i know he like watches me and stuff i, I legit haven't talked to him but i as i said i'll give him credit because he as i said like coach charles all gave me love for wrestling and made me kept and stick with it throughout my, you know, my second grade year, my third grade year. And times I didn't feel like I wanted to wrestle. Um, he, they made it fun for me to want to keep doing it. So, um, I mean, through ups and downs, each coach has helped me. I've had my ups and downs with, uh, whether that be practices or weight cutting, every, every, every aspect of wrestling, each one has helped me. And of course my, my main one now is iron, ironclad and Jake's brought me in and done stuff, but you know, Shad, even though, you know, you got the whole ironclad and worst thing. I mean, he's taking me in. He's um, taking me to the gym to lose weight. We, I mean, that was like 10 o'clock at night. We went and lost weight together. Uh, sat in the sauna with me, like fed me, whatever. It took me to practice. And at times, because I live like an hour and a half away, hour and 45 minutes. So, I mean, he brought me in and wants me to get better, no matter if I'm on the opposite corner or anything he's always there for me you know you got bwc um james nicholson he brought me in for a little bit and 
even though that didn't work out, I mean, he taught me things that, I mean, toughness, like just small things. And down the line, it, every single one of them have some type of help. And it means a lot to think about it because, you know, it's, it's been a long journey. And I mean, whether that be winning five state championships, every single one of them helped me. And I'm glad that they did. And um, so we kind of move forward. Uh, I had a question about Jake real quick because you mentioned something very interesting. Oh, okay, I remember now. Now you know you you said something about uh, the the whole ironclad warrior thing. And uh, what I what I would like to say is that I think that you, along with Corey, James, Will, have done a a, a better job of not really having. Uh, any kind of animosity and it's, it's more like a rivalry, you know? Yeah. I think it's a good thing. I mean, having mm-hmm. a rivalry, it, um, it makes you get better, makes you want to grow to get better. I mean, I don't know what everyone else is doing behind closed doors on their end and they don't know what we're doing behind closed doors on our end. But I mean, if we all know what we're doing and we're all doing the same thing then no one's getting better. So I feel like it helps a lot with Alabama uh, I mean, even if there's other clubs and they're growing or whatever, but I mean, the two big ones, I mean, they're pushing each other to want to do the next best thing. And I like it. Uh, way, I mean, after a match is done and, you know, one goes the other way, I still love them. And I still like, they still love us for what we do. So I just feel like it's a, it's a great way to grow Alabama. Just not, don't make it like a big mm-hmm. deal in both just a, it's just a big competition. Yeah, I mean, you, you're 100 right. I know that that there are a lot of different ways that we've seen Alabama in the last year, last couple of years. I knew that uh, when when Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, Elijah Oliver was uh, hosting DWC for quite some time. They had open mat where I know you had kids like Brody come up and then he'd be wrestling kids like Camden Tipton, and you got to see certain things like that. And it was it was a really cool uh really cool advancement that you didn't really get to see yeah i like i like that i mean we have a group chat for ironclad we talk about going and wrestling with them a couple times and you know you got the uh devin stones coming for and help and training with us for uh world team trials Mm -hmm. and it's just i mean you have to do that i mean uh i went with warrior to uh virginia beach last year and it wasn't because like i hated ironclad it's just like they just weren't training at the time. And I mean, I did what was better for me. And it was just something that I feel like everyone should not have uncomfort doing that. I mean, you shouldn't have like feel guilty for going to another club. I mean, every, every coach has a certain skill set that everyone should learn from. Uh, And it's just, it's super, it's super nice knowing that. And like you said, you're able to uh, go to these different clubs get those different feels and you're right. You really, you know, wrestling. And I hate to say wrestling is a very selfish sport because you, you have to be like, it's a, if you, if it's you and another guy, you're, you're wrestling and I don't care what that guy has. I mean, like I said, it, it's a little selfish, but in, in the long run, it's all about the betterment of the kids and it shouldn't have anything to do with anything that that goes beyond that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, me and Coach Harzog talked about it all the time. Like, he he talked to us a lot about it's not about what you do in the room, it's what you do after. And, you know, that's all on you. That's what you want to do. And, I mean, whether that be going to lift weights or whatever, you're still doing stuff for yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, no matter what, I'm not going to say we had the best dual team ever. I mean, we kind of saw that. But whenever I went out there, it's I did what I had to do. And that's really how it is. I mean, if you're in a dual match, you do what you have to do. And if the team doesn't do that, then even though the team lost, you know you gave it your all. And, you know, you gave the team some points and all this stuff. And, it, you know, you can't do any much better than that. So I feel like the whole selfish thing, it shouldn't be a bad thing thinking about it. It's a good thing because it shows accountability when you wrestle. It uh, makes you – want to do something for someone else it's not your you know football you can like miss a block and sometimes you know they they still score a touchdown but like it shows a lot of it's a lot of it's a spotlight on yourself when you're on the mat it's just you and someone else and you see all the mistakes 
I mean, one thing that my, my coach up here cones on is he said, a champion focuses on what he can controls and losers focus on what they can't. That's where, that's where most, your most anxiety comes from that is when you focus on something that's not under your control, but you know, we could talk about that all day. Kind of, let's kind of move into your career. Uh, of course, the most notable thing in your early career was when you took on Jalen Young in the state finals back in 2017. Uh, of course, you know, that match, the whole match didn't really go your way. And then you get into that final spot. I, I can't remember. I think you were down like 13, 12 to two or something around there. You had lock him and they never called the pin. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a big humble moment. Like I think everybody remembers that. And, you know, it's, um, it, was, it was something good that happened. I mean, uh, without that, who knows? I'm, I'm out of one and, you know, got like, like, I guess comfortable with being with one and, you know, not worked as hard or whatever. And I'm, I mean, I don't know what I would have done. I didn't have like, whatever, but it was a big motivation when you lose that early and, you know, you think it's the, it's the end of the world, but you know, Hey, I still have five more years to, to make that up. And uh, I mean, it means a lot to be able to, make that up and I mean it without that who I don't know where I'd be and I'm glad it happened um I mean even though it'd be cool to be a six timer but you know who knows it's not it's not for sure that that would have happened so I mean as I said it's is it was a big thing uh in my life and I mean I'm at the college level now so um you know I guess it don't really matter that much anymore no, I mean, I mean, but uh, you you told me before the interview that that Fletcher Swindle said that he was he was he was actually kind of happy that you didn't necessarily win it because he was afraid you might get a little too uh, big for your britches. And uh, I, I think I think there comes a lot of maturity that a lot of young athletes may or may not have uh, to be a, you know, to be a six timer. It takes a lot because you also have to realize that you have to repeat yourself five more times. Yes, and that's what I was saying is like. Um, winning five is a lot, but that losing part is a big uh, a wake up call. I mean, it, it really does. It really is. And you know, no, no one wants to lose in the state finals, but sometimes you can take that as a good thing and you know, learn from that. Uh, like my teammate, Pre like you got Preston Jones, he did terrible. Like, I think I like six to fifth, like, I, I can't remember. Like, he got low at state. And so he started working a lot more and then he got second. I mean, it wasn't the outcome he wanted, but he got a taste of that. He got a taste of what I had. He had a taste of losing and having everybody see you lose. And especially being 5 eight, 6 eight, the like the light is on you. Everybody's watching. And it tore him up. I mean, I, and I'm not to say like it was a good thing, but maybe it was a good thing, you know? And he has two more years and it's – I think it'll be a good thing for him. I think um, it'll be just like I was. I think he'll, he wants – it makes him more hungry, makes him want to get better and to uh, win the next two years. And, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's very interesting because we, we talked in the middle of the season a lot about Preston. You know, you, you told me about how this kid is coming up. And, uh, and, uh, you know, what do you, he's kind of the future of a program that you've left quite a legacy on. Yeah, it was, um, there's always someone below and, and it's, it's kind of like how Christian was. If you like, Aaron was the, uh, the oldest one, I guess. And I worked out with them and then he left. And then I was like, okay, well, we still got Christian and Fletcher. And then they left. And then I'm like, okay, I have two years where now I'm the young guy who has to take over. And there's always the top the top dog in the room, of course. And I feel like Preston as a as a human and as a leader and a wrestler, he is a very good leader. He he loves wrestling. Uh, he's a very nice kid. And I feel like I I installed a little bit in him to like get better and I mean I drove I drive to practice and I really hope that uh he takes over and starts driving other people to practice like Christian did to me and like I did to him and I, I hope it becomes a tradition for 
press and do it to the next kid and then they do the next kid and that's how it becomes a program is when you're every teammate's helping each other and trying to get better and I feel like Preston is a very good uh, branch of the tree that I feel like will will do very good for the program and and before I get ahead of myself I, I want to kind of go back to your your seventh grade year you had a very you you and Corey although only I believe is, is I think it's only that one year that both you guys were in the same way you guys have been I would say like rivals throughout your entire careers yeah um it was it's very funny to like talk about that I think I remember we were at his birthday party and we went out to eat and I remember him talking about everybody else winning like everybody else winning a state title he's so small that like he was talking about me like me winning a state title he wanted me to win and then it's like weird that he like joins the conversation and now he's like yeah I'm winning and so um yeah we wrestled uh, once at a, it was like 80 pounds there, but anyways, we don't, we don't talk about that, but I, on the record, I'm one and oh against Corey Landon. Match. We're not, we're not talking about live goes. We're not talking about any of that in an actual match. I'm one and oh against Corey and I will not wrestle him again in a match. Cause I'm going to leave him one and oh, but I, I am one and oh against him. So it was very, it's very cool to go back and look at me and him being one of like, I guess I, he wasn't one of the sticks, but he was about 80 pounds and I was one of the six. But we're in the same bracket. And it's just no one knows that that wasn't following along. But it's like, hey, I was in the same bracket as Corey Land. And like I did get higher than him. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying anything, but that one time we were, I did get higher. So now, I mean, you're right. It's it's interesting that um, that so so much you 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 were a youth in what I know many people uh, would have called the golden age of wrestling. Uh, a lot, a lot. We saw a lot of people that um, that Jake and and so many other coaches kind of were like, these are the guys you need to look up for or look up to. Yeah. Yeah. It, we had, um a wrestling banquet and like you see all these youth kids coming up and we have like our, our table with like me, Corey, Sam, Brody, all of us like sitting there watching. And I was just sitting there. I remember thinking like, this is, this is where I was. And I'm not a lot of people are going to go to youth term and be like, yeah, this kid's going to be the next five tower. This kid's going to be the next six tower. There's not a lot of them, but I want, I don't think I lost in youth in the youth state like three times in a row. Like it was like in the finals, three times in a row. One was the Will Miller. Um, I can't remember the other two. I I have to go back and look, but I do remember one being Will. That was my first one ever. And you don't think about it, but now he's at App State, and we're both wrestling in college. I mean, it's somewhere to think about, but I mean, the youth kids coming up are you don't know yet. I mean, those kids could be the next. D1 athlete, the next six timer. The I mean, it's crazy to think about, but it's cool to that now that I'm moving on to a, a collegiate level, I can step back and like look at them and see how they grow in in high school and do all this stuff. And I, I was there and watched some of it. It's super cool. And uh, you know, uh, another thing that that we we've, we've kind of talked about is that you kind of been there through a lot of landmark changes that have happened in Alabama wrestling. Uh, one of which was, of course, that 5-6-A became a thing. Like, I remember that I was looking at, at the state tournament the first time it happened and um, and, it, and saw that Alexandria was the only 5-A school, or they, they were the highest 5-A school to play, and they placed ninth. I know, that's insane. I, that was... That was that was a year after um, Fletcher and Christian left. Yeah, and it was I remember thinking about that, and it was like, well, where's five six day? And it, it was a big thing. I mean, ninth place, you know, you don't think of it that much, but being we're like the, one of the smallest five A schools, and we did that good. I mean, that was like, even though we didn't come home with a medal or anything like that. It was a big thing for us to qualify this amount of people and to have this many people on the podium. It was, it was super big. And I mean, it was, 
uh, that year was super fun. I mean, it was, I mean, everybody thought like on the team, they're like, yeah, we lost Christian and Fletcher. And I was like, well, what about like these guys who have, uh, aren't going to be the number one guy in the state, but they are super good at on the backside and super good at winning a couple of matches in the front side and scoring points, which could make us do very good. And I mean, it's, it was a fun year and that was, yeah, I, now I'm thinking about it. That was a super fun year. We had super, like, a teamwork was super cool. Like, we, like, I don't know, it was just a big connection now that, like, I'm glad that we, yeah, that was, that was super fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that, that, that was a team that, like you said, you had a lot of people who weren't necessarily number one. Like, uh, I can think of some of your upper weights, like a, like a Judson Cromer or a, a Connor Hall, kids who weren't those number one, number two guys. But I remember, I think, I think Judson made the semis that yeah, year. Yeah, went far. Uh, and so did our 220 kill McCauley. He went far, mm -hmm. which we were not expecting at all. He goes on a run. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that was – I mean, we, that was also uh, Caleb Matthews who made it to the semis too um, and lost – I think lost by one or an overtime or something like that and came back and got third. And as I said, like, even though he lost that semifinals match, we had people that will come back on the backside. And that's what everyone did. And I think I was the only person who made the finals and, like, yeah, or anything like that. Or one, of course. And then um, – we had those guys that just picked up the like I can't even take the credit for that. They scored the more points than me. So um yeah, that was that was super good year for us. And I mean, I hope next year, now that we're going to five A that we can do even better. I, I mean, you know, you, it, 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 and it's interesting that I think I I, I don't want to say this if I'm wrong, but I think there are only like four or five of, of, of you individuals who can say that you guys were two time five, six, eight champs. Yes. I, I think, I think about that's you, Corey, Caleb Rowe, Melton. And I think that's it. Probably. I oh, mean, Will, I, Will Anderson. Yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot. Well, what Brody? about Brody? Brody. Yeah, Brody. There's just so that's, about that's, six of you who can only say that. I think that's a very, that's, a very crazy thing. Because later on, you know, who knows? We might not go back to five eight six eight. But it was it was a, a time where wrestling took. I mean, five eight six eight was such a powerhouse thing, where you can say you were a five eight six eight state champ. And um, I was talking to Preston before he lost. Whatever, we're not going to talk about that. But I was saying, you know how how big it is to win something like this? Because we knew the next year they were going to change it whatever. But something like that is so big because it might not ever come back. And so I feel like that was a super good experience to uh, to win, and especially to with everybody I felt was watching uh, 5A and 6A uh, matches because I, I liked them. No, I mean, I, I got to see day one of 5-6A – last year and and i definitely think that the atmosphere that was the 5a state tournament last year was insane that was the best turn like i remember like i felt bad for like I, 7 a and one through four was nothing like 5a six a i mean they had the lights going like the spotlight came out like ran out to the mat and like no like i just i remember thinking i was like i really I love 7 8 and 1 through 4 a but I want that again. <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, them splitting off a little bit so we could have that again. I thought it was super cool. And especially we were, like, aside a different weekend so everybody could come watch, too, if they were 7 a So that was super fun. That, and I, as you said, that was, that was a super – that was a good time for uh, wrestling. I mean, like, like, you know, I think, I think it'll be something that people talk about for, for a long time, well after both of us uh, have gone through college and, and you know, we're ready to start families and people are like, oh, do you remember the five, six, eight state tournament? And they're going to be kids who, who don't know, but I hope yeah. they do. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope, I hope they get that experience. Cause that was, that was, that was very fun. Although in my head, I'm sitting there thinking it was one of the biggest mistakes that had ever occurred in Alabama wrestling 
it was one of the, the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I I don't agree with all the reclassification stuff. I I will say I I I'm glad it happened only on the um the competing standpoint. I like that I was in the five and six A. Because, you know, as, as we were talking about earlier, that uh, we were like 15 kids away from being 1-3-4-A. So say I was 1-3-4-A and I win a 1-3-4-A state championship. Then it's like, you know, uh, I'm a five-timer, and but it's like so many different divisions and stuff. It's like, I mean, I, I if I was in 1-3-4-A, I'd want to be in 5-A and 6-A to wrestle those type guys. And I, I really do feel like that. I, I'm very thankful that I was in that position to wrestle on the middle mat. Well, uh, of course, you know, as you, you finished your illustrious career as a five-timer, you, you've had your, your ups and downs in your career. And uh, of course, news broke uh, about last week that you were going to commit to Life University. So why Life? Um. I went on – I really didn't go down that many visits. I went to, like, five different schools, I want to say. Five, I'll say five schools. I reached out to a couple more. But after life, it just – something clicked in me. I was like, this is might be something that I want to do. And um, Logan is a very good friend of mine. Um, we really just started becoming friends, like, in the last year. But – uh, he committed, and then I saw, like, Will was, like, thinking about committing, and then I was like, I know, maybe this might be for me. Maybe this will be a fun journey, like, having some Bama guys in the room still. Um, and, I mean, life is a winning school. I mean, what can I say? Like, I, they win national championships. And so I was like, well, maybe I want to, like, help. Maybe I want to do that. And Omi is a such – he was such a good – guy he's he's such a good like coach and I, I went and practiced with him once and I really enjoyed it like I really enjoyed walking around campus and learning about different things and I finally figured out what I wanted to do in life and everything just puzzled to life I mean I was writing it was super stressful um I had tournaments and stuff like the week before I was super stressed on where I wanted to go how I was going to uh, look for other coaches. And it's just such a stressful two weeks. And I've, I, I needed to get it off my chest where I was going to go, like what was on my heart. Because, I mean, I just felt like if it was on my heart that much that it, it needed to happen. And it's such a good um, school. And I'm very glad that I chose it. I, I don't regret it one bit. And I'm ready. I'm so – like I'm in school like – looking up stuff that I already know about life just because so, I'm, I'm like super excited just to go and compete. So Jaden, you mentioned that you, you think you kind of figured out what you want to do after college. Yeah. Um, don't play this back later on if something changes, but my, my goal is I want to go into uh, sports si health science or exercise science. Mm -hmm. And I want to uh, open up my own, um, my own, I guess, sports recovery center would be super cool, something like that, rehabilitation center. And I feel like that'd be super cool because you have um, – I want to. I would like to open it up in, like, a Birmingham area. Like, I would come back for, um, for uh, I guess, Birmingham-wise. And there's so many schools that are invested in wrestling and stuff, and I feel like I've made a name for myself. And that's why I feel like a lot of my credentials that I wanted to do and – gain credentials is when I come back for a career I could say hey uh you want to come do my like sports stuff I did this at Life University I was a collegiate athlete I'm a five-time state champ blah 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 and they're like okay yeah he knows a little bit about sports so I might come he seems like a cool guy I mean I'll go I'll go try him out and then uh you got wrestling coaches I could talk to bring their guys their teams in I just it all made sense to me whenever I finally figured out what I wanted to do. And as I said, life has a very good chiropractic program and this, you can like make connections and like that would be good for what I want to do. So that was a lot of what it wasn't just wrestling. It was really just what I want to do after wrestling. So I'm glad, as I said, I have no regrets choosing where I wanted to go. No, and, and I think that's that's definitely an important thing that a lot of people who um, 
who decide they want to wrestle in college, they never look past wrestling. And uh, I, I think I think it's interesting that you brought up that you you finally knew what you want to do. And, and regardless, if that's what you end up doing in the future, of course. I can promise you that there were probably when I was in high school, there was no way I thought I was going to get into any kind of media at all. Uh, but, you know, it was it was something that was kind of kind of on the back burner. But, you know, you need to know that you you have to have a plan for after college because wrestling isn't forever. Yeah. And college is just such a like, I mean, when you look past the whole D1 and like D2, like like the whole thing, it's just what you want to do and what your college presents to you. And as I said, Coach Harzog is a very good coach, but he also talked me through my college process. And, like, he was like, hey, you don't need to look at the name of the college. You need to know what they do on the backside of it, like what they offer, what money-wise what you want to do and all this stuff. And I feel like that brought a big – it opened a big door for me to end life. Well, uh, Jaden, I would have to say that's probably all the questions I have for you today. Thank you uh, so much for joining me. Uh, is there anything you want to say to my viewers before I let you go? I don't think so, but thanks for having me. Uh, of course. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, stay cool up in wrestling.